Hello, my name is Joel Dunning, consultant thoracic surgeon here at James Cook Hospital. I'm delighted to be joined by Robin Sonley. Uh, so Robin Sonley is a complementary therapist and uh, has 11 years of training in acupuncture and auricular therapy. And he, we are delighted to say, that has joined us since October last year in our thoracic surgical department. So we're just going to talk to him about a few of the fantastic benefits you can get by offering complementary therapy uh, to your patients so Robin thanks a lot Thank for uh, having a chat to us so so we've been doing it preoperatively postoperatively thoracotomies sternotomies ravages quite a lot of different things so let's let's do a little whiz around mm -hmm. uh, and let's just start preoperatively what's been the sort of things you've been able to offer preoperative patients uh, having thoracic surgery so the main issue we're dealing with is anxiety more than anything else the um, so when patients come in they're apprehensive about surgery sometimes and we can use that to, uh, we can use, I generally use acupuncture and um, auricular therapy to relax them and the main thing we would use is an auricular seed which presses on, um, which you know, irritates the vagus nerve, lowers the respiratory rate, lowers the heart rate just slightly, makes them feel a little bit more tranquil so that they can just attend and feel more confident in their surgery really I think. Yeah. And just nuts and bolts, how long does it take and where have you been doing it? So, okay, um, I will admit just through me um, and not working in a surgery department before, it was getting the pre-surgery uh, assessments done, it was a bit more complicated because there's a lot of people coming to see them and we were doing it on the um, male surgical assessment unit before they go in and it, we, we would just sit them in the chair when you know after the anaesthetist had been i would put sometimes i would put an ear seed in their ear and that could stay in during the surgery or we'd sit them in a the chair put some acupuncture needles in their body for 20 minutes and they would sit quietly hopefully and then i would i would wait around and if they needed to go for surgery there and then i would take the needles out and they would go down so it was just again to get them into a more relaxed state yeah, well, I, cer I certainly think we we found it was a lot easier, and it was really brilliant to fit in. You didn't need a whole chair to lie down or anything. It was very, very, very easy to bring that in actually, yeah, and, yeah. and we certainly had a lot more relaxed patients coming in. So let's let's move over to post operatively. It's probably where your main benefits come because yeah. we we cause quite a lot of pain, don't we, as surgeons? Yeah. So let's take a standard thoracotomy patient. You know, what have you been doing for our patients? So, well, um, the main my main part of for that is actually acupuncture we would call it body acupuncture because a lot of the time the needles would go in the body and um, when the incisions are done and we get that intercostal nerve pain and it can refer to different places you know under the shoulder blade it can actually be in that specific area as well so I would needle along the intercostal spaces and relax that I could try to desensitize the nerve but also try and relax the muscles in that area as well and that's always useful to just for that tense, you know, that when people are in pain, they tense up. We relax that, makes everything work a little bit better. The other thing we've seen a lot of is because of the position in surgery, get a lot of trapezium pain and shoulder pain, and we can deal with that as well. So it would just be body acupuncture in for muscle groups, nerve pain, and then we might do something for overall relaxation again as well to try and you know increase the body, you know, the body's natural levels of serotonin and dopamine. You're know, aware we would just try and let the body relax a little bit more and it works a little bit better. I'm always going to come back to relaxation, but again, it's the add-on of certainly desensitizing those nerves and making the, the muscles, the auxiliary muscles around the area work better. Really. And again, nuts and bolts, you're on a ward. How long does it take? How many needles and, and where are you doing it? So I would do it um, either in the bed, um, in the patient's bed, or on, if they're in a chair, we can do it in a chair. Sometimes we were we were taking them even to the day room and doing it if if they felt like they wanted to walk. It it would be that matter of um, how many needles would be depending on per patient. Sometimes we'd only put four needles in. Sometimes we'd put twenty four needles in. We'd palpate, find out what was going on, put the needles in for twenty minutes, um, count them in, count them out, of course. And the patient we'd generally like the patient to be still and relaxed by doing it, but. Um, and yeah, we would work around everybody. I mean, as part of the team, I would go and see the nurse on that ward. I would go and see the specialist nurse and say, this, I'm going to do that, is that okay? I would sometimes go on the ward rounds and then like drop out and go, right, I'll do that patient and then move on to the next one. I, it's just about fitting in. And because it's, it's simple, it's, it is quite a simple procedure to do, 
it's quite a cheap to do as well because you know the needles are very uh, inexpensive and it's quite flexible so I normally like 20 minutes but sometimes I put the needles in and the patient would have to, I'd have to remove them and they'd go for an x-ray or wherever it would be and then I'd see them again the next day so so it is I think it's important to be flexible as part of that team and the nursing team works really well with me to be honest with you. And how long do you think a treatment lasts for relief of pain? <laughs> that can vary I would I would hope what I've seen for the thoracotomies is sometimes they're in a great deal of pain and they're going, again we're not we're not we're not reducing any of the pain medication as such because they're having acupuncture we're just monitoring what the patient says so quite often I've seen it decrease as the days go on I've had some patients who are in um, you know where they would say the pain was 10 and then after the acupuncture it's gone down to two so and then I've gone back the next day and it's probably gone back and raised it slightly but not back to where it was so it's just about re-educating the body to stop firing off those nerves a lot of the time you know, I think yeah. and so you've done a lot of thoracotomies thoracoscopies but you've also done stenotomies ravitch all sorts yeah, of things do, so does your approach change much or have you discovered anything different with these patients so um with the stenotomies because uh, I've been primarily working with your good self and I've done a, we've done a, anyway, you took me through a lot of what those procedures were um, with the sternotomies I've not spent as much time with them and it would just be some of the um, HDU nurses would say could you come in and see this patient it's a lot of pain and the, the, I think I've seen five patients in that time and it's been quite remarkable actually it's been quite jaw dropping because I've used a very simple procedure but I think a lot of the, the time um, the it's just the, the pectoral muscles have gone into spasm and I've used I used six needles in total and the patients often go to sleep almost straight away again kicking in that secondary nervous system the parasympathetic nervous system and it's been quite remarkable to when one patient was a 10 and then they went down to zero and then that stayed zero for the whole thing well not apart from the you know from you know the actual Constantly. surgical incision and all of those things yeah but it was quite remarkable and i've seen that a few times to be honest with you i'm quite in, that's quite interesting and probably needs some more looking into some more research so. yeah. <laughs> fantastic yeah. yeah and and so we've got the acupuncture yeah. and then we've got the auricular therapy seeds yeah. in the ears so uh, we yeah we use the auricular acupuncture again as uh, sometimes we use it in conjunction with the body acupuncture um and that primarily for me is to kick in the parasympathetic nervous system um and just make that you know make the body switch off that the you know the sympathetic system and that adrenal thing but it's quite a useful tool if people you know if there's a lot of things going on where people in hdu sometimes there's too much to try and disrobe and get to the area so we would use e ear acupuncture and then with the ear seeds that's something we do um you probably laugh but a lot of you know a lot of staff members a lot of domestics get the ear seeds just to help them sleep help them be less stressed at work and there is quite often a line on a monday morning of domestics <laughs> waiting for me to put the ear seeds in and that's seconds and it's so cheap i mean i, I think it's two pound for 50 seeds to just on a seri strip and it doesn't have to i know we're talking about seeds but what it all it does is it just something that irritates a nerve in the ear and um, and it could be anything that you, that you sometimes you use metal ball bearings like tiny tiny ones but the ones we use as just seeds and they're sterilized and it's just an stereo strip and it's just placed in the ear and it seems to have a great effect i mean uh you know uh, it does make me laugh uh, a lot of people um a lot of the uh one of the surgical matrons was saying no oh, she thinks it was placebo effect but it helped her sleep so she didn't care yeah. so and i was like that's fine with me as long as you're happy with that that's good yeah. with that you know but because she she wasn't sleeping very well put the seed in she was sleeping instantly and then when the seed came out you know she slept well and then started to regress again and then came back so i've been using it on the staff but i also with the patients where they don't want any um they want minimal intervention the ear seeds are quite useful and it gives them a focus as well you can give them homework i say if you're feeling pain if you're feeling particularly anxious you can go home and press it and it gives them a job to do it gives them a focus as well so that's quite useful and I guess seeds might be good in people that don't like the idea of needles or are scared yeah. of needles, yeah. I guess. Do we get many of them or not? Yeah, we do get a few of them. And obviously the irony is they've just had major surgery. <laughs> so the same, they don't want needles. And I'm saying, that's absolutely fine. So I would use, um, I would use the near seed for that particular thing and just say, it's, you know, this is yours. You know, it can stay in for five, you know, five days, you know, seven days. And I said, take it out after that. And if you want another one, 
come back and see us all. Yeah. And then in addition to acupuncture and auricular therapy, uh, you do some sort of relaxation therapy, mindfulness yeah. therapy. Yeah, I, I think that's useful. We often when they come into clinic, you know, and we do the pre-assessment, you know, and we get particularly anxious patients, and they might get called, you know, we might be flagged up and say, can you come and see these? And we give them some breathing, you know, some very very simple mindfulness exercises where they, you know, to just stop them turning over what's going on in head. And for me personally, I think mindfulness is a useful tool. We often these mindfulness courses you go on it's about you know the, the, it's about you know do you know an hour's meditation on the night do two hours meditation on the night my personal one is i teach very simple things very quickly that can be done on the ward or can be done in the bed or can be done at home when you've got a busy lifestyle because you know again we teach this to the, you know the patients and we teach it to the staff sometimes are very anxious it's just something that you can do regularly to stop your mind running over things some people get it, some people don't. It is just practice like anything else and some people it's been phenomenal and some people it doesn't work. So you need a number of tools in your bag to kind of progress through yeah. things. And I suppose we have seen a few chronic patients, you know, with chronic longer term pain, mm. you know, the post thoracotomy pain or, or nusbar pain and things. Yeah. And I guess it's been quite helpful acupuncture and mindfulness all together for the longer term patient. Yeah, it, it, it you know, it becomes again it's just you know, you have a number of tools in your toolkit and I often would give you know, try you know, try the acupuncture, that worked a little bit. Add next treatment would add something on. Then, you know, but I'd always start with some mindfulness and some you know, breathing exercises. Again, not the physio breathing exercises, although it does tie well in with that because I've been working well with the physio team. And, you know, just lowering the respiratory rate, lowering that shoulder tension, making them focus on something that's going on now rather than progressing into the future. And it's, again, it is a, it's a package of it all because patients don't just come with a lung, well they do just come with a lung issue, but obviously the mind gets involved with that as well. You yeah. know. Well, fantastic, thank you very much. I, you. I think you're the only thoracic surgical complementary <laughs> therapist I think in the world, so you're unique. Well, and it's been you. a pleasure having yeah. you with the service. No, it's Many great, thanks. thank you. I couldn't have been supporting more, and thank you for coming and finding me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great. Thank you.